welcome to our service of worship this morning. This is a day of thanksgiving, and the psalmist reminds us that we must enter into these gates with thanksgiving and into these courts with praise. And we are going to do just that. As soon as I get my finger fixed. There we go. I'll take a moment to speak and say good morning as well. And a, uh, a special thanks to James, who will be helping with the Ministry of Music this morning, as you have already heard. It's great to have you with us. Uh, I would encourage you, if you feel like standing during the hymns this morning, feel free to do so. And as is with COVID restrictions for the time being, you are being asked to hum along with great gusto, but with not singing, unfortunately, at this time. I think that other than that, just a reminder that um, on the 24th is the uh, craft market, which will be happening in the gymnasium. If you have donations that you'd like to make for the um, table, pantry table, that's what it is, pantry table, you can uh, please all donations gratefully accepted, and you can talk to Judy Richards or Anne McCormick, who's not here this morning. And those things will be able to be dropped off at the church hall as you would normally do before the sale. Are there any other announcements? Speak now for our gold piece. All right. So one of the things that is so wonderful in our church tradition is baptism. It is that time when we welcome into our Christian family new members who, if they come as adults, they've decided to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, and in the case of most in our tradition, they're brought by their parents as infants, and the parents make promises to raise their child in the Christian home, and we, as a faith family, do as Jesus said. We take children and we bless them. Today, we get to do that. It's been a long time coming, William. A year ago, we kind of started this process and we picked a couple of dates and they got changed, one because of COVID. But we are gathering here today to celebrate the sacrament of baptism and it is a time of joy. Now there's going to be some little differences because we are doing this during COVID. You will note that I will at no point take William into my arms. Uh, I will remain masked and we will keep somewhat of a distance from each other. So Craig is going to be not only dad today, but he's going to be my hands as well. And so I will say the words that need to be said, and pray will perform the actions. Jesus, when he walked out into the marketplace, gathered crowds around him, and on one particular occasion, parents were trying to get their children to Jesus because they wanted him to bless them. And the crowds around told them to stay back, that the children were not the focus or the important folks in the circle of Jesus and that they should take the back seat. And Jesus heard that and he was not impressed. He was very upset, in fact. And he turned to the disciples and he said, wait a minute, I want you to clear the space around me and I want all of those children to be brought here to me, because to such as these belong the kingdom of God. These children are in fact the most important pieces. And if you live as you should, you will become like little children, and you too will enter into the kingdom. And Jesus took the children into his arms and blessed them. And we gather today to do that same thing. 
We will make promises. We will celebrate. We will baptize. We will welcome. I'm going to invite Jenny and Craig and William. Do you want to come up to the house? You come on up to You guys can stand on this side, and I'll stand socially distanced from you on this side. Water is a symbol of our journey and our faith. The water reminds us of the creative energy of the universe that in the very beginning brought all things into being. It reminds us of our journey from slavery into freedom as our people walked through the Red Sea to begin a new journey. It reminds us of the waters of the Jordan where Jesus himself was baptized, chosen, consecrated, and sent out to do the mission and ministry entrusted to him. Let us pray. May these waters continue to remind us of a journey, a journey of hope, of promise, of love, of possibility. May we be enriched and cleansed and empowered. We pray in Jesus' name. So Jenny and Craig, I ask you. Do you believe in God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit? If so, please answer, I do. Do you believe in Jesus, the Word made flesh, come to reconcile and make new? If so, please answer, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, our teacher and God? If so, please answer, I do. Do you promise to bring William up in a Christian home? Teach him the stories of Jesus? Encourage him to become all that he has been created to be? If so, please answer, we will. We will. We'll try. <laughs> I'm going to ask you who are witnesses to this covenant. Do you uh, promise to journey with Jenny and Craig? to offer them support and care, being with them in the journey and holding them always in your prayers. If so, please answer, we will. Amen. And will you reaffirm your commitment to provide Christian education for all children under your care? If so, please answer, we will. Amen. All right. He's gonna dislike his dad instead of me. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Creator, in the name of Jesus, the Word, in the name of the Spirit, our Teacher and our Guide. We mark you with the sign of the cross and claim you as Christ's own forever. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look on you with kindness and give you peace. Oh, man. Let's welcome the newest member of our family.
and may it remind you that William is the light of Christ in the world. We give you this blankie just for you. So you will always know that you have a big family who love you and care for you. And when this was knit, prayers of joy and hope and love were woven into it. space. We light the candle of the east, morning, spring, and birth. We light the candle of the south, fire, noontime, summer, adulthood. We light the candle of the west, water, evening, autumn, maturity. We light the candle of the north, earth, nighttime, water, and old age. So we mostly like the candles. <laughs> and their symbolic presence reminds us of all that spirit brings into this place. The circle is open night and day, birth and death, joy and sorrow meet as one.
would invite you to join with me in prayer. And the words, your words and my words, are printed on the screen. We join the earth and each other to bring new life to the land, to restore the waters, to refresh the air. We join the earth and each other to renew the forests, to clear the plants, to protect the creatures. We join the earth and each other to celebrate the seas, to rejoice in the sunlight, to sing the song of the stars. We join the earth and each other to recreate the human community, to promote justice and peace, to remember our children. We join together as many and diverse expressions of one loving mystery for the healing of the earth and the renewal of life. May it be so. Let us hear these words as recorded in the book of Deuteronomy. When you come into the land that has been entrusted to you, which is your inheritance, and you settle there, you shall take some of the first fruits of the harvest, place them in a basket, and take them to the temple. To the priest who serves there, you shall say, Today I declare that I have come into the land promised the ancestors. When the priest receives your offering, you shall then say, Wandering Arameans were my ancestors. They moved into Egypt and were few in number, but during their sojourn there, they became a mighty nation. They were treated harshly, and in their oppression they cried out for mercy and for freedom. Their cries were heard, and they were led out of Egypt into this place, a land flowing with milk and honey. And so now I bring the first fruits of the ground as a thanksgiving. When this is done, then together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, celebrate the bounty of the earth. And reading a selection based on Psalm 30. I will raise up my voice in thanksgiving and praise, for I have been gifted, loved, and blessed. I have seen what happens when trust is placed in a power that is both beyond and within. I stand on a foundation that is firm, encompassed by a love that is secure. And in this place of holy mystery, my being is cradled in tenderness. While weeping may tarry for the night, joy will come in the morning. When grief floods my soul, one day, my morning will turn into dancing. The heaviness of my heart will be replaced with peace, and I will raise my voice in praise, for I have been blessed. Let us pray. We breathe deeply the breath of life. We open ourselves to spirit as it weaves its way in and through and among us. We have been reminded of our story of faith. In the words that we have sung and said, in the words that we have prayed, May we now hear divine voice as it speaks to us in this time and in this place. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable this day.
So we have gathered here as countless others are gathering this day in churches across the land to celebrate Thanksgiving. It is a brief moment in time that we in this country have set aside inviting all people to pause, to step back from the craziness and the uncertainty, to step away from our doubts and fears, and to focus on the things that are blessed, even in the midst of wherever we find ourselves. And throughout this weekend, families of all different shapes and sizes will gather around a table together, sharing whatever it is that they are able to share from the bounty of the earth. But more importantly, they will gather to be with one another, albeit maybe a little smaller bubble than normally, but nonetheless. They will gather with family, perhaps physically and virtually, and they will give thanks for all of those things that we cannot touch, like love and light and hope promise and possibility. Acknowledging that we are indeed a blessed people. Now, we all know that gratitude, living in that space of gratitude, should not be confined or contained to one day a year. In fact, it should be at the center and core of all that we do and say. For it has been proven over and over again, time and time again, both in faith communities and in the secular world, that living a life of gratitude, focusing on positivity and abundance, has transformative powers for life. You see, it is how we view things that gives us the ability and the strength and the power we need to get over those bumps and road mountains that are in our way. It is that place of gratitude and acknowledgement of abundance that can, in fact, help us to, as the psalmist says, allow our mourning to turn into dancing and allow our tears to be tears of joy. And it works. It depends on how you look at it. You know, are you a half empty or a half full kind of person? I know that I have often gotten um, ridiculed, jogged for saying, uh, for being a person who wears rose-colored glasses. And as I've said to you before, they're really good glasses. You should wear them. Because the world does look so much bigger and brighter and wonderful when we can see those sparks. And that is not to diminish the difficulties that we find ourselves in. But when we can see the crack, when we can see that little bit of sunshine, then it sparks a place in our being that changes everything. I want to share with you some words by author and theologian Joyce Rupp as she talks about Thanksgiving and what it means to, to see things through a lens of thanksgiving and abundance. She writes, Thanksgiving is a time to look beneath our external lives for the unwavering love 
the ceaseless peace and the enduring strength that lie in the deep waters of our souls. If you look at a sunset, you might see only the disappearance of light. If you look beneath, what you might see is the darkness opening up to the splendor of the stars. If you look at a broken relationship, you might see only harsh endings. But if you look beneath, perhaps you will see courageous seas of new growth. If you look at lost dreams, you might see only disappointment and doubt. <clears throat> but if you look beneath, you may see the stuff that new dreams contain. If you look at the death of a loved one, you might see only pervasive sorrow. If you look beneath, you may see that love lives forever in your being. If you look at the planet's pain and creatures' woes, you may only see despair. If you look beneath, you may see hope woven in the compassionate care of many. If you look at yourself, Perhaps you might see only tarnished, unfinishedness. But if you look beneath, perhaps you will see the basic goodness that shines there. If you look for the divine, you may see only unresolved questions. <coughs> but if you look beneath, Perhaps you may be astounded at the availability of divine love. It's a matter of perspective. Is your glass half full or is it half empty? I think mine is actually really full. It's not even half. Because the things that are around us, despite the difficulties, the doubts, the fears, the tragedies, there's so much to be thankful for. Today, I give thanks for you. For each of you, for God in you, for the light that shines through you, for the healing that comes in your touch, in your gentle words, in your compassionate love. Today I give thanks for this world, this earth that we call home, whose season of beautiful and amazing colors reminds us daily that for every death there is a rising, for every sunset there is a sunrise. For every tear, there is a laugh. When we can see the world around us as our ancestors did, we are truly blessed. In the book of Deuteronomy, we are reminded of a journey, a journey that was far from pretty. And yet, as they remembered, 
as they remember their time in Egypt, slaves to taskmasters, as they remember the grueling journey through the wilderness. They remembered it was a journey with a destination to a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, a chance for a new day and a new start. And so they brought the first fruits of the harvest. And together with friends and family and strangers, gave thanks and celebrated the beauty of the earth. And the psalmist gives praise for a power that lies within and beyond, a power that is mysterious and wonderful, that is far more than we can ever ask or imagine, and gives thanks and is blessed. The more we trust the no unknowable depths of our existence, the more that the power of gratitude becomes the daily song we sing.
May we seek to forgive those who have wronged us and begin a new journey together. May we find ways to reach out to those who are marginalized and oppressed, joining with them in the creation of a new world order. And may we be empowered to change the things we can and be at peace with those we cannot. We pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever.
As we leave this place, may we be blessed with tears. Tears shed for all in our world who are hurting. And may we become agents of healing. And as we go, let us reach out our hands in service. And may we be blessed with foolishness, enough foolishness, to go and do what others say cannot be done. Mm -hmm.